Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, I'm going to tell my wedding story. I'm going to share my location and I'm going to just share how much joy I'm feeling right now. I have so many props, things to show you. I've got my flowers. I've got my shoes. I'm wearing my wedding jewelry and I've attempted to recreate my wedding look. Um, it's not perfect. You know what I mean? It's not exactly, exactly how I looked on the day, but it's pretty close. You know what? As I was getting ready for the wedding, I vlogged, and in the vlog, I recreated the look a couple of times to kind of prepare for the wedding, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's going to look different every time. So it looks a little different today, but pretty darn close. As you guys know, if you followed the vlogs, I did my makeup myself, my hair myself, and I did, well, my, my husband and I did everything ourselves. We picked out our outfits, we went shopping, we tried to figure out the vibes, and it all turned out just perfectly, magically, wonderfully. It was the greatest day ever. So let's go through it. Okay. As you guys know, I moved to Europe. Okay. Now this process isn't exactly like I'm moving states. So there's a lot of paperwork that goes uh, goes into it. There's a lot of patience that goes into it. So I'm in technically the process of moving to Europe, but it's looking good and it's finalizing as we speak, right? The process has been a lot, not just getting married. That was separate almost, but moving, getting a new schedule. I'm about nine hours ahead of my Pacific time zone that I'm used to, six hours ahead of Eastern time. I had to transition how I did my job. I had to switch how I spoke to my family when I called them. I can't tell you how many times I've called my sister at 3 a.m. in the morning on accident. And she's always like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And I'm always just forgetting that there has been a time zone shift. So a lot has happened. I've been feeling overwhelmed. I think stress has been like my best friend for the last few months. But now that we're settling, now that everything is kind of coming together, I can't tell you how relieved I feel that I got to this point in my life. So it's hard to know where to start, but I guess I wanna take us back to how we even got here in the first place. Okay, so <sighs> reminder that this time last year, I was experiencing an insane relationship with chronic pain and an unknown illness, and I was experiencing a huge shift in my life. I was sick, confused. I was also super busy with work. Work was going really, really well. I was doing collab after collab. I was getting opportunities to grow my audience. I was really busy with work. I was so busy with work, I didn't even know I was making six figures. That's how insane my life was last year. I was just working and being sick. I was beating myself up for not being like a perfect YouTuber, for not putting out enough content, for not doing enough. Well, I didn't even realize I was making so much money because I was spending so much money on medical bills. I spent like 16K total on my health last year. I was just so overwhelmed. And in the middle of all of it, a man came into my life and we hit it off. I cannot explain to you how wonderful it was meeting him. We ended up meeting through my Discord. As many of you guys know, I host a Discord. It's a great place. Many people have fallen in love there. I think it like it invites some of the most individual thinkers and it invites people to truly show a part of themselves that I think is more honest. And so I think it's easier for people to bond in an environment where they don't feel like they're going to be judged. And so I was holding an event and he showed up and we had a great conversation as I do with everyone on my Discord. But something stood out to me with this person. And what stood out to me, I think, is the way that he talked about his own ideas and himself. And I think that that is what made me want to continue talking to him. So, of course, I slid into the DMs and I asked him if he would like to keep talking to me. Now, initially, first day in, of course, I did not think I was going to marry or date this person. That was not on my mind. And... I don't think it was on his. I would guess I would have to ask him, but it definitely wasn't on my mind. I don't think it was initially on his. I think initially we just wanted to talk about ideas. And for me, as somebody who loves to talk about ideas and my work, I always wanted somebody that would at least overlap with my work enough to be interested in talking about ideas. So it's not that he needed to like be a fan of my content, which he hadn't really seen. It's not that I needed him to love the levels or something. No, 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 no. I just needed him to be a person or her to be a person who would like to already be thinking about these things. So when we met, we could just talk, 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 talk. And that's what we did. We started off talking, didn't think much about it. A couple weeks into talking, I was like, oh my gosh, wait, something's happening here. I'm 
in a moment. You guys know I talk on my channel about being in a moment. Life is full of moments. Some moments last longer. Some moments are harder. Some moments are more joyous. And you know, usually in life, we just live our life and we don't think much about it. And then all of a sudden, in hindsight, we're like, oh my gosh, that was that was a moment. Now, ever since I went on my introspective journey and I continue to go on it, I continue to be aware of moments when I'm in one. So I'm not going to lie. When I was talking to him initially, I was like, oh, I think I'm in a moment. And I told him like, hey, I think we're having a moment together. And he was like, yeah, something seems different this time around. Now, we didn't know exactly what it was, but I think it was like already very quickly clear that we were having a very strong connection. That connection could have been so many things. It could have been friendship. It could have been uh, just discussing philosophy with somebody. It could have been, I, I don't know, it just could have been so many things. And I think we were <laughs> shocked to find out that it meant that we had found our person. I, I think that that made so much sense but at the same time it's kind of like oh oh because I think both him and I had radically accepted in our own lives obviously that whether or not we met our person didn't matter I think him and I both settled in a reality that made sense with our joy we both were content with where we were at in terms of relationships I think in a lot of way we were just happy to live our lives and if we met that person great and so we came into each other's life already having gone on these journeys by ourselves. So by the time we came together, we were like perfect, perfect in asterisk, perfect here, quotations, because we had gone on those separate introspection journeys. Now, I know it's different for everybody, but for me, when I say that we've gone on those introspection journeys, I mean, we had asked ourselves the questions that I think a lot of people have yet to ponder. What does it mean to be a person? Who am I? What am I doing here? What do I need? What do I want? Um, what do I have? What relationship am I having with my consciousness? So if him and I had met at a completely different time in our lives, we wouldn't have been compatible. We wouldn't have been perfect. As you guys know, if you've been following my content, I have dated some people. I have gone through some controversies. I have had issues. I have been in unhealthy relationships and I have been a very different version of myself many times over. And so it's not that I believe that he was always perfect for me or I was always perfect for him. I really think that timing is everything and I don't really believe in missed opportunities. So you know how people will say right person, wrong time? I don't know that I believe that. Because the consciousness that a person is along their journey, meeting up with you at the right time, is the only version of their consciousness they could be. So I, I'm not sure that if we had met at a different time, he would have been the right person wrong time. I think that you're only the right person if you're the right person at the right time. Otherwise, you're just another consciousness in the universe, right? So I'm very glad we met now. I'm very glad we met after years of me being outside of my toxic cycle. I'm so glad we met um, just later in life. You know what I mean? I'm glad we didn't meet when we were in our early 20s. I'm glad we didn't have those um, opportunities to kind of, I don't know, I'm just so glad life went the way it did. I think this process has made me so grateful for past Brittany. She did so much work to get here. Just just remembering how unhappy I've been or how unaliving I was or how desperate I was to sort of understand myself and then to do so much work to get here just to be reaffirmed in that, that what's that word? Like, I have been so reaffirmed in my own journey, not just by finding him, but by by finding my joy, right? By finding my joy, I was able to facilitate an opportunity to sort of make a relationship with this consciousness. Because if I hadn't worked on myself, if I stayed in my toxic cycles, if I was still with my ex-boyfriends or girlfriends, if I was still in that, I just wouldn't have been able to have this. And I think that's why I'm so grateful for past Brittany because she made the very hard decision to leave those relationships, to leave those bubbles. She made the very difficult decisions to have the world make fun of her, have the world doubt her. She made the very hard decisions to stick to her guns and say, I'm going to go for something better. And she had the willingness to be open to waiting until she could find the right person to build the right life with. So much of society is telling us to settle. 
Settle for your jobs, settle for your school, settle for your friends, settle for your life, settle for your relationships, settle, settle, settle. And I just can't vibe with it. I can't vibe with it. You know, and again, a part of it is how I was raised. My parents told us not to settle. They don't mind that the majority of their 10 kids aren't married. They would rather us wait for the right people than to settle. And so I think I get to be reassured in my former religious bubble, my parents' bubble, my cultural bubble. And then I get to be reassured by this version of Joyful Brittany that like there was never a rush to find that person. I remember um, before I had met him, there were interviews or collabs I had done with YouTubers and people would always be like, oh my gosh, why have you been single for three years? What are you looking for? Don't you think you're being too picky? Aren't you, you know, and great questions, right? Like um, great questions. But I'm so glad that I, that I maintained my joy so I could be open to this person because there were amazing people who came across my life, who interacted with me, who went on dates with me. I'd been on a few first dates. I had talked to some people. I had considered some people, but I knew it just wasn't right. Again, I didn't want to repeat the same mistakes I made before, which was to live for the potential of someone or to say, hey, that's pretty good. Maybe this is good enough. I didn't want good enough. I wanted perfect. Even though we know, you and I know, perfect doesn't exist. What we mean by perfect is that 80% compatibility, that value sharing compatibility, that overlap in how we see the world, that reality affirming consciousness that doesn't make you feel gaslit and crazy in your own relationship. I was looking for healthy, right? And not just healthy, but compatible with the va-va-voom and compatible with the resume how we see life and our goals in life. I know for a lot of people, um, getting married after a year of dating or a year of courting, well, not really. See, okay, so here's how the story actually went. Actually, before I get into kind of the controversies around the engagement, let me tell you this. Okay, for those of you who don't know, we did a court style dating. So we did courting, like really intentional dating. We were either gonna date one to three dates or one to three months and then either cut it off or continue the relationship. So after three months, um, we made the effort to meet each other. He flew to America and met my siblings and met our family priest and met the people in my life that would be very important for this process to continue. And we had made the decision that we would meet in person to double check. We liked each other's smells. We liked each other's vibes and that we weren't just in love because it was over the internet, right? Because we were feeling that that feeling of love, we were thinking like, oh my gosh, I think this is my person, but let's double check because we know that chemistry is a thing. We know people make mistakes. We know how easy it is to fool yourself into thinking you're in love in a in a long-term way. I think you can be in love in short spurts for sure, but I'm looking for long-term cohabitation, like until like death do us part. So he came to America, met my siblings, got interrogated by my brothers. It was fantastic. He, he just passed with flying colors. They loved him, thought he was funny and interesting, thought he was very kind to me. He, a farm brother in particular was really happy that I seemed to like someone for once in my life that I didn't feel like I was settling for. He was really, really happy for me. And I think I really needed that. Farm brother, though younger than me, is also you know, married and happy and dates like I date. He's the one who inspired this form of dating. He's the one who told me, stop going on second and third dates with people who have red flags. And I was like, okay. And by red flags, we mean not coinciding with values. I don't mean universal red flags. So as an example, on a first date, I usually ask somebody, what would you do if we had a trans kid? Because that will tell me whether or not we have thought about the same subject long enough to parent the same way. Whether or not we have kids, I want to make sure that I'm with somebody that right away has already thought about something that I've already spent years thinking about, right? And he had, he had a great answer. Our answers were basically the same. And I was like, okay, awesome. Just like with farm brother and his wife, when they met, my farm brother had dated so many amazing women, but it wasn't until his wife that he was like, this is the one. After the first date, he was like, this is her, this is it. And that's how I felt with my partner after an eight hour date. I was like, oh my gosh, wait a second. I think this might be it. Like I was hesitant. I was worried. I had concerns because in my past I had settled so much. So I went to my farm brother and I went to my family priest who's a homie of mine and I said, look, I'm feeling very unsure of myself. 
because I feel very sure of him and I don't know what that means because in the past, though I felt sure about people, I was also living for their potential. So I would always say, I'm sure about you, but you need to change. And with him, he was the first person where I was like, I'm sure of him and I love him for exactly the consciousness that he is and I hope to grow with him. And that was very different. So my farm brother comforted me. He knows my borderline. He knows my past. And he was like, Brittany, you know yourself. You have dealt with your borderline. It's in remission. This is, I don't think this is your mental illness. I think you're right. I think you're meeting a person who's impacting you so significantly because it's significant. And you're allowed to experience that. I think I had to give myself permission to actually realize like, did I run into the person in the whole universe I wasn't sure I would run into? Because look, I was okay being single. I was okay raising a child by myself. I was okay doing a lot by myself because I didn't want to settle. But I, I didn't know I would run into him last year. I didn't know I would run into him in the next five years. I thought maybe I'd run into her or him or them, I don't know, in my 40s or 50s. Like you just never know. And the fact that we crossed paths and the fact that we were open to it and the fact that we agreed on not wasting each other's time, the fact that we just overlapped with our values made me feel overwhelmed with like, oh, I'm sick. I'm getting diagnosed. I'm overwhelmed. I'm like, you know, working overtime and hemorrhaging money for my health bills. And here's this wonderful person who's coming into my life. And I'm just throwing all these things at him. And he's just like, okay, cool. The same reasons a man wouldn't date me or a woman wouldn't date me because my borderline or my medical issues or my fibro or anything, he was like, no, nah, I kind of get that. I, can, I think I can work with that. Insane. Like everything that he told me about himself that maybe would be a deal breaker for other people, for me, I was like, no, I, I can handle that. That's within my boundaries. That is something I can understand. You know, I think there's this idea that if you're both neurodivergent, you'll get along. But that's not true, right? Or if you're both... Um, mentally ill, you'll get along, but that's not true. You have to have sort of a balance and a cohesiveness, I think, with your vices or issues or illnesses to kind of also make it work in a healthy relationship. And in the past, I think my mental illnesses with my other partner's mental illnesses just didn't work together. And also my other partners weren't really interested in introspection to the point that I was or the fact that my current partner and I can sit for hours and hours and hours every day just talking to each other about all of these ideas and concepts and we never get bored just made me feel like this is it. And also the fact that he got along with my siblings really well, which none of my past partners have done. None of my past partners have gone along with my siblings. So that was a huge, huge green flag, right? Um, now, they don't need to be besties. They just need to actually enjoy hanging out on occasion. And even that I couldn't get for my past partners. I couldn't even get my past partners to feel comfortable around my family. They just always felt like they were being judged. And they were so insecure about it that it just projected onto my family versus my current partner, my husband. He's so secure in who he is. He's very self-assured. He's he's very just good with who he is that any time he was like, being, you know, interrogated by the priest or being interrogated by farm brother or being questioned. He just kind of had such good energy about it that it just made everyone feel a lot more relieved about the whole process, myself included, obviously. And him, you know, it was just a lot of just amazing reassurance. So, okay, so we're going on this journey. Oh, gosh, I hope I didn't skip anything. Okay, we're going on this journey. He comes to America. Um, he meets my family. He does the thing. And it was hard because my parents didn't want to meet him. They weren't sure. They were used to me making mistakes in the past and they had met a couple boyfriends at this point and they were kind of like, you know, when it's serious, we'll meet him. So we said, okay, fine. When it's serious, you can meet him. So they didn't meet him. And to be fair, we, I was living in Arizona and they were in California. So in order for them to meet him, they would have had to drive, you know, eight hours one way to come meet him or we would have had to driven eight hours one way to meet, to meet them. And that just seemed like a lot of work. They were possibly open to that at some point, like us coming to them. But again, that's like a lot to do. It's a lot of spoons. You know what I'm saying? So we didn't think too much of it. And I said, I know this is hard for you guys to understand, but I'm I'm going to pursue this person. So he showed up. Our chemistry was off the walls. Everything was great. We loved spending time together. He came for two weeks. It was awesome. We had such a great time. We, you know, spent time in the city, spent time in the country. We drove around. We had an like just a great time together. It just went perfect, right? Just like really great. And I was like, okay, so this is the first step to saying yes to marriage. The second step was me going to Europe and meeting his people, 
That was the second step to the engagement process. And the idea was that I would go to Europe and I would say yes or no to an engagement and that would be the finalized yes, him too, right? He would say yes. And we would get rings and that was our goal. So in so that was in October and then in um I guess was it November? I guess a month later, yeah. Was it that way? October and then November? I guess it might have. I could be off a little bit. Um we ended up so from like June to November, we were dating, right? November ish, late November, almost December, I went to Croatia. Croatia is where I live. Croatia is where he is from. Croatia is where Brittany is, Carmen San Diego. Where is she? She's here. She's in Croatia. It's a beautiful country. It's just beyond gorgeous. It's Catholic, which is so funny since I'm former Catholic and always wanted to date somebody with Catholic roots. And though his family is agnostic atheist, not really Catholic or practicing, give or take a couple generations, it just is nice, though, that he has some sort of connection to Catholicism, even if he himself wasn't raised in it. It's a beautiful place. I feel safe here. I like the people here. So I came to Europe for the first time. I came to Croatia, a place that I had not paid attention to in the past, like legit. Of course, I've heard about it, but did it really become a place until I dated someone here? No. Even my mom will say, oh, now all I hear is Croatia. Croatia this, Croatia this. Cro-. It's so funny when something is just doesn't make like it doesn't stand out to you. And then now everything is Croatia. Every I just see it everywhere. It's I, it's it's crazy how that works out. So I came, I met his parents, I met his friend, his besties. I met people in his life um, that were important for the moment. I was only here a week, which was not very long, which was a little stressful, but I could only take a week off to come. You know, I can't exactly take off work as much as my job is a free job. Like, oh, I can make my own schedule. I also can't take time off or it just ruins the algorithm, okay? So I came for a week and we bought rings. We made the decision to get married. I think a big part of it was just solidifying um, in our minds that it was real by visiting each other's countries. I think a big part of it was making sure that I got along with his parents and that they liked me and they did. And then making sure he got along with my siblings. We just needed to be sure. So we had a checklist of things to help us make sure we weren't making a mistake. We weren't rushing into something because we just connected so well, right? And that was a big decision to make. So I came, met his family. We had a great time. It was just an amazing experience. And I was so sad to leave. It was very hard to leave. I'm not going to, I'm not going to play. Like even the morning of needing to get on the plane and go, I was just devastated because I was, I was just so in love with everything. And I was like, man, I don't want to go back, but I had to go back. I had responsibilities. So got on a plane, went back to America And we started the very serious process of spending our life together, right? So from like June to November, we were doing the courting process. And by basically end of November, just before December, we made the decision to buy rings and get engaged. So we went to a jewelry shop in Croatia. We went to a few and none of them were great. I didn't like a lot of them. We finally went to one and it was the perfect place. We wanted something very simple. I told, I remember telling the lady who, by the way, did not speak English. I was like, okay, girly, I need something easy to like do dishes, easy to be rough in, easy to go hiking in. I need something that I can like kind of bang around. I need something just like a, a ring, like just a band, nothing with like jewels or diamonds or anything that's going to fall off. I need something that I'm not going to be completely soul crushed if I lose it because you know, your girl clumsy. I told her I just I need something that will make me feel relaxed. So we had an option. Let's see. I can't really show you guys, but I have two little rings. They're bands. They're white gold. And we had two options that I really liked. So I put them both on. I was like, okay, let's see which one I like better. And I put them both on. And I was like, um, to be real, I kind of like both. So him and I got matching rings. We got two rings each. And we wore them basically the moment they were available to us, which actually wasn't until way later. In the springtime, he came back to America to actually help me through all my doctor's appointments and getting diagnosed. And he brought the rings with him because, you know, they had to be resized and everything. And we got to wear our rings at that point and we reproposed to each other or proposed to each other. You know, we got on knees and did all the gushy stuff. 
and we put the rings on each other and that was it. We had, that was like, that was it. Okay. It was happening. He spent a month with me in Arizona. He hung out with Mark, my brother, as you guys know. And during that whole month, Mark would literally come out of his bedroom and be like, oh my God, do you guys ever stop talking? And I was like, no, we never stop talking. That's why I can't explain to you how relieved it is to be in a, a place where I can unmask, where I don't have to think about everything I'm saying, where yes, I have to be a little considerate because I'm kind of a loud person. But in general, he just, he, we're, we're really allowed to be as comfortable as we can and we're figuring it out, right? Again, it's not perfect. It's only perfect in values. What it is though is easy, simple. It's like, even when things are miscommunicated because of cultural differences, it just takes one conversation and we're good to go. We don't go to sleep angry. One of the rules we have is like if there's a frustration and our miscommunication, we just talk about it then and there. We actually joke um, that we're going to overwhelm each other with how much we like to like negotiate on the spot. But it's it's working out perfectly. And I think it's just because our personalities are so – they're not even similar, guys. Like we're not the same in personality. We're the – same in wanting to facilitate so much joy that we're willing to do the hard stuff in the moment so we don't have to do it tomorrow. I think in the past I would get in fights with partners and I would like run away from the situation or they would run away from the conflict and we wouldn't want to problem solve it because it was a lot. And I think ultimately, oh my gosh, ultimately it was because it I think would lead to the hard question of like incompatibility. But with me and him, because we know we're committed and we know we're compatible, having the hard conversation is like having an easy conversation. We're just like, hey, I think that might have hurt my feelings. Let me think about it. Yeah, I think I'm 2% hurt. And we're very, again, neurodivergent in the way we probably communicate. But I usually give a percentage of how I'm hurt. So let's say there's like a joke that's being said. I'm like, hmm, I think I'm 2% hurt by that joke. Meaning I'm not actually hurt, but a part of me is twing like I'm like oh what's that and then we'll talk about it and then we're like oh okay interesting so it for us our communication style is probably really strange to a lot of people but we find being very detailed is much more helpful and being very like reasonable so what we what we'll do is like when we're talking we'll say um like is this you know uh like a feelings thing you know I'm in my feelings right now I'm going to talk to you like kind of like romantically in my feelings or are we going to just be very like logical like very like it is what it is and I think that helps us kind of negotiate better and clearer because again life is hard and things can sound offensive and I think if you're in a heightened sense of emotion you will feel offended and defensive and so I think it's easier to say like oh can we just talk about this without the feelings and then we'll coincide with the feeling so let's say um, I'm trying to give an example but like I think what we're trying to do is check our egos because we are trying to live a long life together. And ego is and can be related to trauma. It can be related to past relationships. We do and can project onto each other because we're humans. And so I think it's important to sit there and be like, I love you. Reminder that I that like we can communicate through this. Reminder that I love you. Like, let's talk about it. And that's why we tried to never and we haven't yet gone to bed angry you know, or in a miscommunication cycle or something like that. So again, I just think we have so many other tools that other people don't have and I didn't have in my past to actually make a relationship long lasting and right, to actually know this is the right relationship. Again, for me, the green flags are our ability to communicate, go into detail, use percentages, use safe words. For me, the reason I know this is my human and we're going to have an amazing life together is because we make it so easy to be heard. We make it so easy to be seen. We make it so easy for our partner to come to us with things that hurt our feelings. You know, hurting your feelings is normal. How many times have I hurt my siblings' feelings? How many times have I hurt my mother's feelings? How many times have they hurt my feelings? If we're going to have relationships that are so fictional that we never hurt each other's feelings, I feel like that's silly. And at the same time, accidentally hurting your feelings and then with malicious intent hurting feelings is different. In the past, I would think when people would say relationships are hard and you have to work on them, I would mistake um, that that sort of malicious behavior with that unintentional behavior. So if your partner, and I think this would happen, your partner would cheat on you or maliciously lie to you or for their own ego not tell you the truth, I think all of those things I thought were just like mistakes somebody made because of their childhood, which could be true as well. 
but that means they're in an unhealthy state of being, which projects onto the relationships, which brings the relationship down. And unless they're willing to work on those things, which most of my past partners weren't, it meant that the relationship couldn't actually grow from a healthy place. So again, the benefit of the relationship I'm in now, and I'm older, I'm 34, is that my partner and I had gone on those journeys separately. And so by the time we came together, it was much easier for both of us to be like, hey, I think that hurt my feelings. Do we want to like fix that somehow? And then to be honest with, hey, I think I'm getting defensive. My bad. Let's, okay, recontextualize. This is my bad. Because a lot of it is like just being very human. A lot of miscommunication is just being very human. And so I think, again, I feel really blessed to have this amazing human who will talk through things with me. So I don't always have to guess or it doesn't have to be a mystery of what he's thinking. Like he'll just tell me, which is why when I'm with a group of friends and they think it's crazy that him and I don't lie to each other, it confuses me. Like I remember I was having dinner with a group of friends and they're all very nice people, but they thought I was insane that I didn't lie to my partner. I think one of the examples they gave that what I thought was very funny is somebody said, well, let's say I'm going on a business trip. I w- And the business trip is not really a business trip. It's actually a friend's hangout trip. I wouldn't tell my wife that. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, look, I'll never cheat on my wife, but I need to get away from her. And I was like, okay. He's like, so I would tell her it's a business trip, but it's really a boy's hangout trip. And I was like, okay, why don't you just tell your wife you want to hang out with your boys? He goes, no, 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 you can't tell your wife that. And I was like, what? And he had been in like a successful relationship, long term, all that stuff. And I just don't understand that way of being. But if it works for you, it works for you. In my relationship, it's the opposite. We just want to know what we're doing and where we're going. And then we're like, cool, because we have the same values. I'm not going to get mad at him for wanting to live his life. And because he shares my values, like he's not going to get mad at me for wanting to live my life. You know what I'm saying? So needing to lie in a relationship like that is so strange to me, but you do you. But you know, what's interesting is like, I know people want to be lied to in their relationships, which, mm -hmm. but what's funny is that people don't believe me when I say like, I don't want to be lied to. I don't care. Like my partner and I don't, like we'd rather have honesty because it's part of our value system. And we'd rather have like a moment where our feelings or our egos a little hurt then live with the realization that I'm forcing my partner into a situation where they have to lie to me, right? We want to create an environment where they don't have to lie, like we don't have to lie to each other, which means we have to be ready to have our feelings hurt just a little bit. And then we'll build on that, right? So for me, for us, our goal is to facilitate our joy and both of us really value honesty. I think as a past liar myself, who had to lie so much and mask so much and pretend I was someone I wasn't because I was a queer kid in a conservative bubble. I can't tell you how freeing it is just to be myself, to just say like, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking. Just to vent or express myself and have somebody know the difference between Brittany expressing herself through her emotions and Brittany expressing herself through reason. It's just so safe. And I think that's what I'm trying to say is that for me, a healthy relationship is a safe relationship, a relationship where I feel safe to be myself. And I don't think a lot of people get that because I do think a lot of people settle for those relationships where they have to tell their partners they're going on a business trip when it's really a boys hangout. And you can do that and you can call that successful. That's awesome. For me, that would mean I had failed myself by denying myself an opportunity to build a life with someone where I could be truly myself. And so this journey brings me here now where, again, I have to give major points to past Brittany for doing all the work because present Brittany could only have existed because of that girl back there who did all of that work to get here, who stopped lying and and was more reasonable with how she masked and was more reasonable with how she identified herself and was more honest about being neurodivergent, was more okay with the diagnosis of, diagnosis of borderline and got better, who accepted she had PTSD, who radically accepted that she was hiding ugly truths about herself. Like my assault was so embarrassing to me. I didn't want to tell anybody. So I was lying to my partners at the time about even being assaulted. I was so ashamed. And now I get an opportunity to... Maybe finally express that story, you know, in a way that I haven't ever because it's just so personal to me. Now I feel safe enough and I'm like having that relationship with myself because I'm now given an opportunity to have it. I think sometimes when you share part of yourself with someone, they really have to curate that environment to do so. 
And then of course, because him and I want to make each other better, we also create an environment that makes it safe to grow. Like, hey, this is something I'm working on. What do you think I should do to make it better? Hey, this is something I'd like to change about myself. What do you think I should do? And knowing that that person is going to help you change in a way that actually makes your real self healthier and better and it encourages you to do so. Like this is very new to me. I'm used to seeing and I'm used to viewing lots of relationships as a settling situation. That's why I think a lot of people are lonely in their relationships. A lot of people are getting divorced. A lot of people are realizing like, oh my gosh, like my partner's not going to come with me where I'm going. They're not going to be introspective with me. They're not going to question themselves. They're not going to ask themselves like, why do you think it's important that you have these boundaries or these rules? They're not going to question why are they lying or cheating or deceiving themselves And I think that's really difficult. So again, you can have the relationship you're going to have. But for me, the reason I do think that I finally found that person was because I was open to it. Every person I met, I was like, are you my person? Are you my person? Are you my person? And then I'd be like, no, 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 no. Because people would ask me like, why don't you go on another date with me? Why don't you think I'm your person? I was like, I just, I can tell our values aren't aligned. Our lifestyles aren't aligned. Our like, our design, like my my commitment to honesty isn't aligned with that with you and that's really hard right so again i think the reason i am so joyful and i've consented to marrying this person is because i had that relationship with myself first and then i found him now that's not to say you can't grow with your partner because if you get with somebody young you might have to go through it with them And it's true that my partner and I will continue to grow and change. We'll just do it more together than I think other couples. Because again, we've already asked ourselves the questions like, what does it mean to be a man and a woman? And like, what does it mean to be a human? Like, we've already had those conversations with ourselves. I think for me, if I had somebody ask me like, Brittany, how do I get what you have? You, You get it out of a need, a need to eradicately accept yourself as a person. Even my marriage, which has to do with another person, first begins and ends with me. Who am I? Who am I in relation to him? Back to who am I? Same with him. Who is he? Who is he in relation to me? Who is he? And then we bring that together to create a cohesive cohabitation. So we are here. We're at this stage in the relationship where, okay, the wedding is coming about. So, okay, that's the like the relationship buildup, right? That's all the thought that went into the relationship, all the complications that went into the relationship. Um, I think one of the major green flags in the relationship early on was that we were both willing to travel to one another. I know it's a big deal. I definitely couldn't have done that in my 20s. I'm definitely lucky that I have the money now. I'm definitely lucky that he had a good job and that he had money saved up and that we could do that together. We're lucky that both of our jobs were flexible. We were lucky that everything kind of lined up for us, right? Um, okay, so here we are now building up into the to, to the wedding, basically. So the wedding was just fantastic. Perfect day. Absolutely nothing went wrong. It was the most magical moment ever. And it was something that only could have happened with the participation of our family and friends because they really just brought the energy to it. Now, as you guys know, early on in the story, my parents couldn't accept our union because he wasn't Catholic. He wasn't religious. He wasn't going to encourage me to believe in God again. And that was hard for them. But eventually my parents came around And my parents encouraged us to get married, even civilly. They were really upset, actually, that we hadn't gotten married as fast as we could have. But, you know, a lot of it is paperwork and just like planning. And I wanted to get my dress and we had to get him a suit and we had to be reasonable about like how we were going to do it. And since my parents couldn't be at the wedding, obviously, we wanted his parents at the wedding, which means we had to do it in Europe. Right. So we had to just do like, you know, like we had to plan okay you can't just like we weren't going to do a Vegas wedding we thought about it we weren't going to do it so basically what we did is we called his friends we said hey we're getting married do you guys want to come we you know took into account you know like his grandpa couldn't come to the wedding physically so we went and saw him after we took into account like who can we see who can we invite into this union who could be present for our ceremony and I finally got the dress of my dreams from an amazing designer that I've wanted to buy a dress from from forever. And I cannot say her name for the life of me, but everybody knows her work. She's amazing. She went to school in Kosovo. She's a Balkan. Like she, it just coincided so perfectly. I'll link the descri- I'll link her dress in the description, her Instagram, her dresses. She's like an amazing designer. I'm so glad I chose one of her dresses. Best decision I ever made. And um during this process, it just like came together one step at a time. So we bought the dress first. 
We made the decision to go to Europe. We made the decision to have his family present. We made the decision to call his friends. We did one thing at a time because it was very overwhelming through the process. And to be honest with you, I was very overwhelmed. I even had a little bit of a bridezilla moment on the wedding day. It was very stressful. And I was like, oh my God, is this that moment where you're having a bridezilla moment? Okay, so after all the planning, just in the air, after we just verbalized the planning, it all had to come together. So we bought the dress first. And that was months ago, before I even moved to Europe. I bought the dress because I knew I wanted it. It was there. I was like, I'm getting this dress. I'm so stoked. It was about $800. Well worth it. Worth every penny. And I'm going to wear this dress every three to four months on my on my YouTube because I did not just buy this dress to wear it one day, girl. Mm -mm, I'm going to wear it all the time. Okay. So we bought the dress. Then I bought my shoes. So I'm going to run you through, okay? Here are my wedding shoes. This is what I bought. Okay, really love them. Smaller heel. I was thinking about the six six inch heel, but then I was like, girl, I'm not walking six inches on European cobble. I ain't doing that. So I bought these amazing shoes. I will not lie. I should have broken them in before the wedding. My feet were killing me. Absolutely dead. We ended up um, being in Arizona when he came to see me for my diagnosis. We went to Arizona or we were in Arizona together and we went to a local jewelry shop and we bought the wedding jewelry. So I have my earrings and I bought this necklace. And then we got actually when he was visiting, he had to get his ring resized again because both of us are just like getting into shape and we're both like, you know, getting I'm trying to get my muscles, you know, he's getting back into shape. So we're both like doing a lot of activity, especially after the fibro diagnosis. We're trying to walk a lot, you know, we're trying to like get into shape. So everything is just you know, one thing after another is changing and shifting and we're kind of moving with the motions. We're trying to like, okay, we've got the shoes, we've got the dress, we're getting the rings, we're doing the jewelry. Then eventually we had to move me here. So we had to make the decision to even come here. The plan, the wedding was already something we were going to do. Right when we got engaged, we knew we were going to get married, but we couldn't just get married. We had to also make a decision of where we were going to live. So how did we make the decision? We made a pros and cons list while I was still in America. We made a pros and cons list separately. We didn't want to be influenced by one another in terms of like our true desires. We didn't want to pressure each other into a direction. We came together, went over our pros and cons list and realized we had both made the decision that Europe would be better for our family, me and him being the family unit. And we decided that, that would be more adventurous. Look, I was not going to get another opportunity to live outside the States. This is a big deal for me as a person who comes from an immigrant family, as a person whose parents moved country, as a person whose family, most of them don't even have passports. They're so USA, like USA, like they, you know what I mean? This was an opportunity. And to be honest, my parents were stoked for us. By the time my parents accepted our union, they were stoked for me to move to Europe. They were stoked for us. They even gave us a wedding gift, which was so generous of them. It was quite a significant, you know, they're just so kind. So they contributed to the union as much as they could by being encouraging. And they were very stoked for us to live in a new place. And of course, my mother was stoked that I was going to Croatia because it's a Catholic country. And there are a couple of miracles here. And I'm going to go visit them, not Medjugorje, which is a fake miracle. The Catholic Church does not acknowledge it as real. But the other miracles here that the Catholic Church do does acknowledge, I'm going to go visit. I'm so stoked about this. So of course, one thing, you know, everything just started to like, fall into place. It wasn't very clear how it would, but it did. It fell into place. So again, as we're planning the wedding, we're also planning my move. So I pack up as much as I can into three suitcases. I pack up Indiana Jones, my cat, and I fly to Europe. It was the most stressful flight. Indiana was stressed out. It was very comfortable. KLM is a great uh, airline. I really recommend them. It worked out. Everybody was so kind to us. Amsterdam Amsterdam airport was so kind to us. My family took me to the airport, you know, to, you know, Ontario airport in California. They helped me get on the plane. My siblings specifically woke up at like 3 a.m. in the morning to take me and my cat to the airport. My dad helped me pack my computer and all my luggage. My mom helped me organize all my clothes. Like everyone came together to make this happen. And then on his front, his parents were just like so excited, helping us prepare for my arrival. They were just so stoked to have me there. They picked me up from the airport. They drove him to the airport. They were, you know, there's just so much that went into this, right? So after we had made the decision to move to Europe, it everything kind of fell into place, though the stress was high. 
everything did end up working out. So, okay, we get to Europe. We start the paperwork process. We start all the necessary things to do. We have a little bit of stress up and down with how the applications went. And then the good news is that everything fell into place. Everything happened the way it was supposed to happen. And everybody here was very kind through the process. But I think that this is the stress of life is that with a great change comes like new senses of responsibility. I think through this process, it became clear that I was transitioning, he was transitioning into the next step of adulthood. You know, when you're like in your teens, you're 15, 16, and the hardest thing is high school. And then you're maybe in your early 20s and the hardest thing is getting a career or college. And then in your late 20s, it's more like settling down, buying a house, doing all that stuff. Well, for us, like those steps were happening and they're happening pretty quickly on top of an international move, on top of, you know, just getting all the paperwork together, on top of bringing a cat overseas, on top of, on top of, on top of. And it was a new sense of stress. But also, I know I'm going through a transition. I know I'm becoming a new version of myself. I know that he's changing. I know that we are together becoming now married people. Guys, a year and a half ago, this man was not in my life. A year and a half ago, I was not in his. We had no perception that we would be married in under two years. And then bada bing, bada boom, here I am. It changes you. It changes you in small ways. Obviously, I'm still Brittany, okay? But I'm now married Brittany. I'm very much thinking about my retirement in a way I never thought of. I'm thinking about my life in a way I never thought of. I'm talking to his friends about how, like, how to buy property. What does housing look like? What does this look like? We're making a decision about where we want to live in the next 20, 30 years. It looks like I'm going to be European Bernie for a very long time. Hopefully that's the goal. But at the same time, who knows where life will bring us? Maybe we'll move to the States. Maybe we'll move out of both of our home countries. What we're trying to do is just do it together. What we're trying to do is fa facilitate joy. So leading up into the wedding, we talked about everything, fears and anxieties and, you know, what are we going to do for our future? What are we going to do if we have kids? Are we going to have kids? All these things. And all of these things are negotiated based off of our joy, right, with our joy in mind. So moving up into the ceremony, there was a lot of real conversation about our future. And it was so nice to have it with somebody who could get on the same page with me and me with him. It's just so relieving. I can't even explain it. It's just such a relief. So we're scrambling, we're preparing, we're stressing, we're hoping everything turns out well. Wedding day comes around. Um, the day before, I filmed a vlog getting ready for it. And then the next day, uh, I woke up. We both, you know, hugged each other and kissed each other and encouraged each other to be as relaxed as we could be on this day. And his family was like, just relax, just like take it a day at a time, take it a moment at a time. We ended up getting lunch with his friends, which was great. And before we got lunch, we went to a flower shop, which, okay, uh, someone on Discord wanted to know if I had like a bouquet. I didn't have a bouquet of flowers. Uh, we actually went to a flower shop to get two kinds of flowers, one for my hair, so baby's breath, and a rose for his um, suit. So... Even though I didn't have a bouquet, I ended up saving the flowers that I had um, ended up, you know, using for my hair and his his suit. So this is the flowers. I'm, I'm just drying them out. They're coming out beautiful. And we'll just keep those for as long as they stay, obviously. So his friends followed us to a flower shop. We got flowers. We went out to lunch, had a great time with his friends, got to meet um, the ones I hadn't met yet. Had a great conversation, just really great vibes, really great group of people. Uh, talked about anime, talked about philosophy, talked about whatever. It was great. It was just a great meetup. Then we went home and got ready for our wedding, which honestly, like, there, it's, it, I don't know what it is. You know, you think to yourself, it's just a piece of paper. You think to yourself, like, what's the big deal? But as you're getting ready for it, it's overwhelming. You feel like, I just want to look pretty. I just want to look fine. If I'm going to try, I want it to look good. You start to, like, get in your head about, like, is this good enough? Do I feel fine? Are my shoes okay? And then you realize, like, oh, my gosh, you look not only fine, but more than fine. Like, we walked out, of course, together in our suit and in our, you know, my wedding dress and his parents greeted us because they picked us up to take us to the place. And his mom started crying and like it was hard not to be emotional, but we looked great. I went, you know, my partner's very an offline partner. He's not on the internet and I respect his privacy, but man, he looked good that day. Like he looked so 
good. We, I'm not going to lie, we pulled it off and I'm very happy for both of us because like I think we both, I wanted us to both to feel good. I definitely think a lot of the time grooms get neglected at their weddings, but I wanted him to feel very handsome and pretty and whatever in his suit, in his, he looked so good. It, we pulled it off, let me tell you. So his parents picked us up. We arrived at the venue and I had never been to a secular wedding. I'd never been to a civil union. I had only been to religious Assyrian weddings, basically. So this was very new for me. And we arrived at the place, beautiful place, just a great place, and had a little garden space and had all this like aesthetic to it that was really gorge. We walked up these like beautiful stairs into this like, I guess, uh, I guess you would call it like a hall. It was more like a room, but it was gorgeous. And there was two ladies sitting at a desk and they were the translator because I am an American English speaking woman. I don't speak Croatian. So we had to hire a translator to come to our wedding. She was so lovely, great energy, so happy for us, even though we didn't know her. And then there was the official, the government official who read out our vows and did the ceremony for us. And she was also so warm, so lovely, just like great energy. And I appreciated that from them because they're strangers. They don't have to care that we're getting married, but they genuinely had energy as if they knew us. It was just, it was so lovely. So we had our witnesses, which, you know, were his parents. I had his dad. He had his mom. It was really cute. And we all sat together while his friend sat behind us. And I had asked his bestie, I was like, hey, can you take photos of us using my DSLR? Because the professional photographer is only taking the after. Like, she's only taking pictures of us after. And he said yes. And he took the most fantastic photos, captured the moment in real time. He did such a good job. I am so grateful that he was there because genuinely it – was a wonderful experience. It was so cute. So, okay, so we're sitting there. We're like, we have to sit in these chairs and we stand at some point and they're reading us the vows. The vows, the vows were so based. I tried to find them and I couldn't find them online, but the Croatian vows that they read to us were so lovely and egalitarian and I would argue even some feminist. Like it was good. It was very much like you will be a team. You will not tell each other where to work or how to dress or how to be. You will encourage each other to be the best. It was like the most just perfect vows for who we are as a couple. Like I can't even explain it to you, but I was sitting there and I was like, oh my gosh, these are, this is what I wanted for my wedding. And I didn't even plan it myself. We did not share public vows. We did not um, like perform our vows. They read it out to us and we said, I do. And it was the most perfect, perfect vows. Like they were so romantic and gorgeous for the kind of couple that we are. Like it just felt so perfect. And I don't know, I don't believe in God, but somebody was working some magic, let me tell you. So we get up there, we sign, you know, we do the whole thing and I burst into tears, like just burst. I was so overwhelmed with emotion, but to be fair, so is he in a different way. Okay, so we're sitting there doing, hold on, let me, don't let me skip ahead. We're sitting there saying the vows. And so the a Croatian woman has to speak and then the translator speaks in English, right? So he went and did his vows where he was said, you know, she said, do you take Brittany to be your wife, blah, blah, blah. And he said, I do. And his friends like started clapping. They're like, wait, 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 wait. Let her hear it in English. And then they translated it into English. And everyone was joking. And the, the energy was so warm. And his friends would laugh. And everybody was like, there was just so much laughter and warmth in the room. But we were so eager. You could just see it in both of us. We were like, yes, yes, make this happen. Yes, make it official. So, you know, we signed away. We got our marriage certificate. Everyone congratulated us. I burst into tears. His mom's crying. It's just like a beautiful ceremony. All his friends are like, you look beautiful. You look perfect. Everything is great. Your makeup's great. Like everyone was so reassuring. Everyone was like hugging him. And it was just so warm. Now look, it was perfect for what it was. Again, what is perfect? My family couldn't be there. That sucks. My friends couldn't be there. That sucks. But to be honest with you, I think the love I felt from my family, the love I felt from my friends, the encouragement I felt from the people in my life that couldn't be there was enough to make the day perfect. Everyone accepted that they it wasn't going to be the way we imagined it. Look, you think my bestie of 20-something years, you think she and I didn't imagine that we would be each other's like maid of honors at our weddings? Of course we did. It just couldn't turn out that way. 
And so one of the benefits of being an adult is radically accepting that life doesn't end up perfect, but it's still perfect because it's life. My family couldn't be there. My sister couldn't be there. My besties couldn't be there. But they were there in spirit. And that, for me, I'm grateful for. I'm grateful that nobody was bitter. I'm grateful that nobody was mad at me for getting married in Croatia. I'm grateful that everyone accepted and celebrated my wedding the way it could happen. Because honestly, it could have been worse. It could have been that my inner circle threw a fit. But did they? Of course not, because my inner circle is amazing. My inner circle is the best. They were there for me in the way that I needed. And I just, I love that. And I'm so grateful for that because I know how easy it is to say, oh, I can't believe I didn't, I wasn't like, I did, can't believe I didn't go to her wedding. But no, they were like, man, I'm so sad I couldn't go to your wedding, but I'll come visit you. Now I get to look forward to a time in sometime soon maybe where my family gets to visit me, where my mom and I can meet at the Vatican and go see some Catholic stuff, where my besties can come to Croatia and I can take them around. Now I get to look forward to being the auntie that lives in a different place where her nieces and nephews can come visit. Now I get to look forward to something different, a version of my life I never imagined. Trust me, I thought I was going to be USA for the rest of my life. And who knows, maybe we'll go back. And I am an American through and through, don't get me wrong. But Europe is a really good fit for me. And I'm very happy to be here. Croatia in particular, obviously, I've been very general about where I live, just, you know, just for safety reasons. But now I feel a lot more comfortable. We're settling into this location. We feel really good about it. And I'm excited to share more with you guys, right? I'm excited to go see some miracle spots and vlog. I'm excited to go see, or, you know, the different beaches or the different, you know, cities or towns. Like, I'm so excited to see around. <sighs> You know how they say, um, oh, your life is just beginning? I always felt like my life was going and beginning over and over and over again. And it's true that this is a new beginning. But this is also just life. Life is consistently new beginnings when you're growing, when you're changing, when you're exploring. And I'm just so grateful that I get to do it with someone because even though my company is amazing and I do love being alone, sharing a life with someone is just. It's really special. And I'm just really, really grateful that I met him, you know? So here we are now. We are officially married, husband and wife. Very exciting. Um, from this point on, it's just going to be settling into this life, getting used to being here, trying to learn the language a little bit more. I've gotten pretty good, you know, I, 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 I greetings and goodbyes. And I'm trying to pick up a few words here and there. And I'm trying to get used to it. I'm, you know, like, bok means hi and by so like book book or like I've tried to figure it out or dobrdan like I've tried to figure it out Ooh, that kind of came out bad hold on dobrdan dobrdan yeah see I'm getting it but like there are ways like I'm learning but it's hard and I know that it'll be easier but also there's like minimal pressure because Croatians are so sweet and so nice and so like forgiving to my American energy that everything's been working out great. Like some of the ladies at our local like spots we like to go to, they kind of are amused when I try to speak Croatian. I like this energy in people. I appreciate them laughing with me and maybe even at me. But I know that I'm going to stumble through this new life. I'm still getting used to it. And I am just excited to sort of go on that new journey of change. You know what I mean? Okay, so I think is that all we should talk about? Yes. Okay. Shoes, jewelry, how it happened, where we're at, what it was the day like. Perfect. Wonderful. Fantastic. You know what? I'll leave it to you guys. If you guys have comments or questions or you want me to talk about something I didn't talk about, let me know. And I'll just make more videos. But I think that's it. I'm happy. He's happy. We found each other. We're so lucky. We feel really good about it. Everything turned out great. We're so grateful to our families and to our friends who rallied for us. Like we couldn't have done it without them. It was really a community effort. And so we're so grateful for them. We're so grateful for the, you know, energy you guys have thrown at us. Thank you so much for being happy for us. We appreciate that as well. It's, you know, it's intimate to share it with the internet, but you know, I share a lot of my life with you guys. And so I just thank you for all your well wishes. Oh, and thank you for everyone who's been following me for like 10 years or six years plus, And you've seen me be a mess. Thank you for understanding how special this moment is for me. Thank you for understanding how hard I work to get here. I think it's so easy for people who haven't known me or my journey to just think that I'm making a decision that is like impulsive. But you guys know how hard I worked to make this decision, how big of a decision it was and how serious I take it. And 
also how just like meaningful it is to me that I could find a consciousness that I could build a life with because I that's very hard for somebody um, who's looking for something very specific. So thank you so much for your support. I really, I really do feel it from you guys and I really do appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to get going. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you next podcast. Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Da 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 da